Welcome to A Priori Story Timeless. Today we'll be reading from Ava Wong's classic book, Tales of the Taoist Immortals. <coughs> and we're going to start with the story of Lu Tongpin, which is chapter one. And it's called The Guest of the Cavern. I'm here with uh, Blob and Fern. Lu Tongpin's original, original name was Lu Yen. It is said that when Lu Yen was born, the sound of flutes and pipes was heard and a white crane came to sit by his mother's bed. The chamber was filled with fragrance and multicolored clouds were seen hovering at the window. Lu Yen's grandfather was a supervisor of rites and rituals and his father was a secretary in the police department. Like the sons of many government officials, he aspired to follow in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He studied the Confucian classics, wrote poetry, and practiced the martial arts. However, he was also interested in Taoism and admired the sages Cheng Liang and Fan Li, who after serving the country had retired to cultivate the Tao. When Lu Yan was 20 years old, he met a Taoist who told him, you have the makings of an immortal and are destined to live in a thatched hut rather than a golden mansion. When you meet a man named Chung Li Chan, you should seize the opportunity. The years passed. Lu Yan had taken the civil service examinations twice and failed each time. On his way to the capital for one last try, he stopped at an inn for the night. By now, Lu Yan's enthusiasm for a government career had diminished substantially. He sat at a table, ordered wine, and sighed as he drank. After a few mouthfuls of wine, he heard a voice behind him say, no need to sigh and drink by yourself. Tell me what's on your mind. Lu Yan turned and saw a man smiling at him. The stranger was dressed in a short tunic, open down to his waist, to reveal a tuft of hair on his chest. The legs of his pants were rolled up. He had straw sandals on his feet. His hair was tied into two knots on the sides of his head. And in his hand was a large fan. Lu Yen was fascinated by the man. He walked over, sat down at the stranger's table, and told him of his disappointment at not being able to serve his country. At the end of his story, Yen added, I am ready to leave the world of fame and of fortune and devote my life to cultivating the Tao. The strange man then said, my name is Chung Li Chan. I am also called the Hermit of the Cloud Chamber. Would you like to follow me into the mountains and learn about the Tao? Lu Yen did not know what to do. On one hand, he wanted to abandon everything and follow Chuan into the mountains. On the other hand, he was still attached to social conventions and responsibilities. When Chuan saw the conflict within Lu Yen, he said, come, let us have dinner. You can let me know later. After dinner, Lu Yen was still hesitant about following the strange man into the mountains. Chuan saw this and said, I will not force you. He then gave Yan a pillow as a parting gift. That night, Lu Yan slept with his head on the pillow and dreamed that he had passed the civil service examinations and had become a high ranking official. He was appointed chief minister in the emperor's court. He married and had many children and grandchildren and he was respected by all then the dream took an ugly turn. Lu Yan saw himself embroiled in court intrigues. Ministers jealous of Yan's relationship with the emperor framed him for treason and his entire family was arrested. First, all his male children and grandchildren were executed. Then his family shrine was destroyed. Finally, he was exiled to the frontier 
where he died far from his surviving relatives. Luyan woke up from his nightmare, trembling and covered with sweat. Quickly, he ran out of his room to look for Chuan, who was sitting at a table, having his morning tea. When he saw Yen, he said, In one night, you have lived through 20 years of your life. Then you knew about my dream, asked Lu Yen. The Taoist replied, you achieved your goals in your dream, but you also lost everything. Gains and losses are illusions of the mortal realm. Only those who can see through illusions are capable of transcending them. Take me with you into the mountains, said Lu Yen. From now on, fame, riches, and social prestige are nothing to me. Chung Li Chuan congratulated him. You have awakened from your illusions. This is your first step to cultivating the Tao. However, before I can teach you the arts of longevity and immortality, you need to strengthen your foundations. Right now, your body is weak and your mind is cluttered. When you have built the proper foundations, I will come back to teach you. Lu Yen thanked Chuan and they parted. Yen walked out of the inn and told himself, from now on, I am no longer Lu Yen the scholar. I will take the name Lu Tang Pin, which means guest of the cavern. For now, I understand I am but a visitor in this realm, learning how to return to my original home. Lu Tang Pin built a thatched hut and settled in the Chungnan Mountains. He emptied his mind, strengthened his body, and lived the simple life of a hermit. One day, Chung Li Chuan appeared at the door of Tong Pin's retreat and said, I see that you have worked hard to cultivate your mind and body. Now, you are ready to learn the Taoist arts. First, I'll teach you how to turn stones into gold. Lu Tung Pin asked his teacher, after the stones have been turned into gold, will they remain as gold forever? Chuan replied, no, the gold nuggets will revert back to stones after 3000 years. Tung Pin then said, I would rather not learn a technique that could potentially delude and harm people. Chuan sighed and admitted, your understanding of the Tao surpasses mine. After Lu, Lu, after Lu Tong Pin had completed his training with Chung Li Chuan, the elder immortal said, I must return to the celestial realm. If you wish, you can journey with me. Tung Pin bowed to his teacher and said, our paths are different. You are meant to wander leisurely in the celestial lands. As for me, I will not enter the highest realm of immortality until I have helped all sentient beings return to the Tao. Chuan bowed deeply to his former student and said, your deeds on behalf of the Tao will be far greater than mine. With that, he walked into a bank of fog and disappeared. Lu Tong Pin descended from his mountain retreat and wandered around the countryside, teaching all those who wanted to learn about the Tao. <laughs>